Let's rate your dairy options from best to worst with some serious scientific backing. See, I'm gonna break down which options are best for you with dairy when it comes down to inflammation, when it comes down to digestion, and just overall tolerance. So whether you're on a low carb diet or not, this video is gonna teach you exactly what you should stay away from and what you can probably get away with eating a little bit more of. We're gonna move pretty quick so that I can be respectful of your time. But you're tuned into the Internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I also wanna make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn on that little bell so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live. All right, so first off, we gotta address this whole issue with dairy. Most people think that dairy problems are lactose related. The reality is it's not really the lactose. It's more about the different casein proteins. And beyond that, it's more about the inflammatory response within the body. So those of you that know my videos know I'm not anti-dairy, but I take a pretty strong stance with what dairy you should be consuming and where you should be modulating it. So it comes down to the A1 and A2 caseins. So way back when, all of the dairy that we were consuming was predominantly A2 casein. Okay, it was a different form of casein protein that was easy for our bodies to digest and we didn't have a whole lot of inflammatory response from it. Nowadays, we have what's called A1 casein protein, which has just sort of become a genetic mutation of the proteins that are in milk. Now, because of this, there's a high degree of what's called BCM7, which is a bioactive opioid, which means not only is it super addictive, but it's also heavily linked to inflammation. Now, if you're on a low carb or keto diet, the whole goal is to modulate inflammation. That's really what we're going for with a keto diet. So when we're introducing things that spike our inflammation, we're really defeating the purpose. So we don't really want that. Uh, lactose is less of the issue. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna rate them from best to worst, and it's really linking more so with inflammation. Like what is gonna have the least negative effect on you when you're doing a keto diet or any kind of low carb diet, or really just being conscious in general. So number one, the best one you can eat is ghee. Ghee is pure butter fat. It's pure milk fat, nothing else. There might be like a small iota of a glimpse of lactose in there or something depending on how pure it is, but generally speaking, it's pure fat. So you take the butter fat and then you refine it even more to get it super pure. So you're really going all the way. So because of that, it's just a pure clean fat. So if you're introducing dairy or you're trying to keep dairy out of your diet for the most part, ghee is gonna be where you're gonna hang out. That's what you can do. Add it to your coffee, you can cook with it. It's got a very high smoke point, it's very stable. So that's what's so great about ghee, is it's really stable. You can cook with it and it doesn't denature. But also, super high in short chain fatty acids known as butyric acid. This butyric acid, also known as butyrate, okay, is very, very good at feeding the cells within your gut. So it's actually powerful at reducing inflammation. So even though it comes and stems from one of the most inflammatory things that we know of, it's actually pretty darn anti-inflammatory. So it is very cohesive with a keto diet, all right? So ghee is great. Next up, believe it or not, is whey protein isolate. Now, those of you that watch my videos know that sometimes I throw whey under the bus. Now, I throw whey under the bus when you have other protein options, but for the sake of being honest here, in the grand scheme of dairy, whey protein isolate, which is you'd get from a protein powder, is actually pretty clean. Not whey protein concentrate, okay? Note, not whey protein concentrate. Whey protein isolate is where they take the whey protein and then they isolate it even further so there's just protein. Whey protein isolate, isolated protein. Okay, very, very clean in the grand scheme of things. However, you wanna be getting it from a grass-fed organic source, okay? So very, very important there. Next up is going to be Greek or Bulgarian yogurt. Okay, yeah, there's still lactose in it. Yeah, there's still casein proteins, but here's the thing the cultures drive down the pH, okay? That's the whole idea. So when you're taking yogurt and you're making it, you're adding acidophilus, you're adding all kinds of different lactobacillus, you're adding things in there. So what's happening is that's driving down the pH, which therefore makes the calcium and the phosphorus become more soluble. Normally, calcium is hard to digest, phosphorus is hard to digest. When they're in a soluble form, it's easier on the body. So you've mechanically made dairy easier to digest, which is a huge win, which reduces a lot of inflammatory stress on the body to begin with. But when you look at Bulgarian yogurt specifically, that contains additional probiotics. So usually Greek yogurt only has two to three cultures added to it, whereas Bulgarian yogurt has anywhere from three to six. So not saying one is good and one is not, but Bulgarian is a little bit stronger when it comes down to the probiotic effect. Now, 
this leads to huge inflammatory modulation. Okay, so the reason that it's fairly high up on my list is because, it, you know, normally we've got dairy triggering inflammation, but if we have Greek yogurt having the cultured effect that drives down inflammation, we at least counterbalance that a little bit and we have a good effect. So Greek yogurt makes the list, Bulgarian yogurt makes the list. I include it in my protocol sometimes. It just depends on the situation. So it is okay. All right, now let's move over to the other side. All right, cool dance move there because I'm like that. Okay, number four, heavy cream. Interesting thing, heavy cream is actually moving on down my list, okay? It's not one of the top things that I would normally consume. The reason that I'm not a huge fan of heavy cream is simply because it still has a good amount of traditional milk solids in it, right? We're still looking, it's only like 36 to 50% milk fat. The liquid portion is still the milk, right? So we still have a lot of the inflammatory effects. We still have a lot of the A1 caseins in there. We still have a good amount of lactose. However, it is closer to pure butter fat. So where we have ghee in the picture with pure, pure, pure butter fat, heavy cream is sort of the next best butter fat in a way, right? Outside of butter. Now, obviously I could have put butter on this list, but I felt like I wanted to at least skip that a little bit and go to the more mainstream ones here. Uh, I would put butter if I had to, I would probably put butter probably between two and three, between whey isolate and Greek yogurt. But heavy cream is basically where they take the butter fat and they skim it. They skim it manually off the top. Okay, whereas ghee, they skim the butter fat and then refine that more to get pure fat. So here we still have a lot of fat, but still have some of the milk components that are inflammatory. So keep heavy cream to a minimum a couple times per week. Next up is cottage cheese. Cottage cheese moves down the list, but here's the wild card with cottage cheese. Cottage cheese has the potential to be pretty good, but also really bad, depending on if you're going organic or not. Of all the dairy that's out there, cottage cheese is the one that you really need to be the most careful with, with organic or non-organic. Uh, so here's what it is. They take milk and they add an acid to it, and that creates curds of casein protein. Casein is the main thing, right? Casein is the big one that we have to be careful of. If we have the A1 casein, it's not a good protein. So if we have inorganic, non-organic proteins, non-organic milk that we're making cottage cheese from, not a good thing, right? So the cool thing is we still have the bacterial effect. Cultures are still added. So we do have a little bit of that counterbalancing that's occurring like with Greek yogurt. So we have cultures added to the cottage cheese, but the hard part is what happens is you take the milk, you add the acid, and you get curds of pure casein protein. They could be good or they could be terrible if they're the A1, right? Now, then what happens is they cook them even more. And when they cook those curds, they dry them out and it gets rid of more of the whey and you're left with casein and some of fat. Now, that overcooking kind of denatures a lot of the proteins. So a lot of times you're left with sort of a, a messed up protein that's not as high quality or bioavailable as you would like. But you do get the bacterial effects, so it's not at the bottom of the list because of that. Number six, half and half. Simply put, too much milk influence, okay? Half and half is half cream, half milk. So unfortunately, we've just got too much milk in there. It's okay to add to coffee now and then, but realize that you're gonna get a good degree of lactose and you're gonna get a good degree of the inflammatory market or inflammatory components that are gonna be in regular milk. And then of course, lastly, that leads us to milk. Milk is the bottom of the barrel, okay? Even raw organic milk is not exactly what we want. And if you're on keto, it's not even keto friendly anyway. Milk is just not the way we wanna go. We just wanna get milk out of the diet. Some of these milk derived things are not too bad. Now, a couple of honorable mentions that I wanted to throw in here. Okay, now I'm gonna do separate videos on these if you want, but I'd like to get a little bit more feedback from you to see if it's something I should do, to be honest. Um, sour cream is an honorable mention. Sour cream is really taking Greek yogurt to a little bit of a different level. I didn't think that it warranted uh, being on this list because it would have made the video too long. The sour cream finds itself right in there a little bit, depends on what they add to it. Uh, cheeses, okay, I wanted to save cheeses for an entirely different video, but I wanted to mention goat cheese. Goat cheese is usually A2 casein, believe it or not. So goat cheese is a different kind of dairy that's a lot safer to use. When I'm writing meal plans or doing anything like that, if people want cheese in there, I almost always put sheep feta or regular goat cheese because it's tolerable by the body, or it's tolerated by the body, but it's also just 
I like the taste, but it's also just good stuff when you're looking at the grand spectrum of inflammation, okay? Now, if you want me to do a cheese video where I rank all the different cheeses, because cheeses have cultures in them, and some of them reduce the inflammation in the body, and some of them don't. So if you want to see a cheese video, a cheese rating video, put it down in the comment section below and just say that you'd like to see it, and that way my team and I can research it and create a great video. So this lays it out for you, plain and simple. What kind of dairy is going to work for you when you're on a keto diet? Some people are more sensitive than others. Some can have all the dairy and not have an issue. But I think if you limit it to like ghee, the top three, ghee, whey isolate, and Greek uh, Bulgarian yogurt, you're gonna be in okay shape. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.